All right, let's do this. We're here with Floyd Hagerman. He's a professional builder. Uh, <laughs> well, I told you not to say professional, just a builder. <laughs> okay, just a builder. Uh, tw of 20 years experience for residential and light, light commercial construction. Okay, so here we've got the infamous wall. Um, that there was a lot of controversy regarding the soundness of this. So, so Floyd, we have to address here the structural and moisture issues. So what's to be said about this wall? Uh, what do we need to do here? Well, if you get this wall, we got, we got two issues. We got the ends with it's always going to be exposed to the weather, but uh, those can be addressed by using concrete back in a little ways. Uh -huh. this, this is, this, right now, this is an exterior wall. It's because the rest of the structure isn't built on it, but this is basically just an interior wall. Now, there's no waterproofing here, but once this gets dry, once you get your roof on, then your, your degradation of the bottom block will probably almost come to a complete stop once you get the weatherization away from it. Because mm -hmm. these aren't stabilized blocks. Uh, there are very high content in this area because that's all you have. But uh, you can have a high clay content, very high, and they're very strong. They just will have a tendency to crack some when they dry out because the moisture content is so high here too. But they're still very strong. Uh, so, uh, those, the concern those... of moisture will go away once you get the structure done because this will be an interior wall and it's really not even necessarily a load bearing wall this part of the roof will be bearing on this you know but uh, but it doesn't matter you could the this columns wall right will now, support you could take some ramps and drive your bobcat on it and won't go anywhere i could drive my anything here it, it's it, it this this section will take a lot more compression even even the way it's been exposed than a than a a, a, a regular stick built house wall Okay, <laughs> how do we address the the water coming in from the north, the slope downside from the outside? Well, you're gonna. <clears throat> That's the west side a little. I would recommend a frost protected footer. So you, uh, it's going to be a heated structure. So your frost protected footer will work. I've done dozens of them in a lot colder climates than this. Uh, but you got to get your. You're gonna have to have a swell position around it. You have to get this all down, and you frost protect it with insulation in the ground. Now, a wall like this. No, it doesn't matter if it's this wall or if it's a wood wall. You have to have, you got to be so many inches above the finished grade. And what is that for? So the water that hits the wall can drain down and away from the wall. It won't sit there. Mm -hmm. Now with this structure, again, this is a this is an, an interior wall. It's just at this phase of the construction, it's 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 exposed to the elements. Uh, yes. The best thing I would do is go ahead and get the column put up and get your roof structure in place and then come back and address both ends it's going to be exposed to the outside the best way to do that is is take maybe a foot or so or two of blocks down and put concrete blocks on each end and waterproof it okay and then by doing the swell all the way around with the roof structure on the swell all around that will de that will channel any water all the water away from this thing and then this would this will start a drying out process yep so then, let's let's take a look at some of the point issues just like uh, that were brought up so wall not straight What's to be said about that? I, you know, I I built a lot of walls, but I, oh, I don't. What I don't. You got you got a few little wows in it, but uh, I like a wall that don't have it's a block sticking out a little bit. So when I put my little my stucco, my earthen stucco over, it's you can tell that it's not a concrete block. It's got some variations in it. Uh -huh. uh, part of this is where the water got in from the storms. It swelled up. It looks to me like right here, you're uh, you're. Somebody put some blocks in the wall that was turned on its side. Uh huh. That's why you got a higher right there. Yeah, uneven blocks. What is the that, is that, that is that evil? <laughs> well, What's like wrong with like that? This, those ones that are un, uh, your your machine's putting out blocks that are real close to the width and the and the you got a fixed position on your blocks. They're 12 inches by five or something, you, whatever you said. But there somebody confused the the other dimension that varies a little bit. They ended up putting them upright, so that's why you got a, a different variance there. That's easy. If you want to straighten all that out, that'd be real easy. Just make you some earth, earth and plaster, earth and concrete. Put a slurry mix on the whole thing, level it out, and then start again. Okay. I don't know okay. what the what issue about, is. What about the seams not lining up? You, anybody can go and look at any of the structures that are built, and you're going to have from time to time in a wall. You're going to be get, you'll creep up, and you'll have a few seams that won't that will line that will line up over two courses usually. Uh, so you have a few seams that's lined up over two courses someplace. Here's, here's one. That, there's almost lined up. But if you notice, this is lined up three courses. That's, that's the only one I've seen. 
If you just got two courses and the rest of them are staggered, then I don't see a problem with it. Particularly in this case here, it's not really, it's just an interior wall. Uh huh. But, but generally you strive to keep a percentage of overlap to make yep. it more of a mono, so it's like it's all one solid piece of, okay. of compressed earth. What's to be said about the cracks in this wall? Well here, you're doing two things. You're, uh, you're using green blocks. You know, everybody advertises, oh, you can uh, build a wall right out of the block machine. That's true if you're in a drier climate where your moisture level might be at 5% max. But here, you in the summertime, you will never get a moisture level at 5% max. You're going to have to bait it with lime or sand or Portland or something. Uh, it's such a high clay content here. There is some sand, but, but because of this high clay content, uh, you're going to get some, you put these wall, you put, these are green blocks you put in. So when they dry it a little bit, they're going to shrink back. Uh-huh. Uh, they're going to shrink back from the edges. How the strong are, just to address the structural stability issue, how strong are cracked bricks? Well, that, <clears throat> New Mexico has a, has a code, and some of the states that has codes, they can tell you how long, how big the cracks can be, and how frequent, and how deep, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I, I'm not going to address any kind of, this, this wall, the way it is now, will easily, will easily support <laughs> two or three times the compressive strength of a stick built wall. I mean, think about it. Good grief. <laughs> now, there are some places that's deteriorated where the water got in on top, right there. But then we've had a, we had a rain, we, we had almost, really over the course of a week, we had almost four inches of rain. Yeah. So uh, that was your fault. You didn't have it. You should have used a plastic continuous seam. That's what I do, because every place you got a seam like you had it, well, it leaks back there, then you, you constantly have water coming in. These are unstabilized blocks. Uh huh. The only issue I can see with anything might be is where the blocks meet the footer. And there, there wasn't any fire, uh, waterproofing put in. If this was an exterior wall, I'd say you're going to have to tear it down. But this is an interior wall. This is going to be, this is going to be dry. It's not, going to, it's not going to see any moisture as soon as you get this, the columns and the roof on within a week. This will not see any moisture except on the outside. Uh huh. And, then, and, the, and the first thing you do is get the columns up get the swell back so the water can drain away and it will never have a tendency to come in through the underneath the floor and get this damp. Okay. And it, it will start a drying process as soon as you get this roof on it will start a drying process and you know in a year you know the question is uh, there won't, I don't think there'll be enough moisture once you get the roof on that will cause any, any deterioration and these places here where this is deteriorated you got to take those blocks out and put some new ones in. But you know what? That's what's good about this stuff. You can take blocks out, press them more and put them right back in. Don't hurt anything. Mm -hmm. Excellent. <laughs> and the stuff is bad. What do you do? You throw it over there and you let the weather try to crumble it up, and you can you you can use it again. You don't have to take it to the landfill. You don't have to worry about termites. You don't have to worry about a whole bunch of things. You just go press some more blocks, take those bad ones out, fix those, and then. Uh, but these few places where you got two layers of uh, two seams on top of each other, they're very few and far between. Structurally, that's not going to hurt anything because you're sitting on a footer to begin with. Remember, load goes out at a 45 degree angle. So, you, you, that's, that's fine. Now, if you had four or five layers of it and, the, and the, the crack was all the same, then you got a problem because then you got this. But you've only got two layers. In reality, you only got one block difference that they're on top of each other. So, you can't, and the rest of them are tied in up here and it's tied in on the bottom. So, you're not going to get. Okay. Like there was a claim made about trash bricks being used in this wall. I don't know anything about that. Uh, on your what I see that you're making, they're uh, they're just a clay brick. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't know what you know. I, I don't want to get into that. I don't know about what what you mean by trash bricks. These ones here, they they seem pretty good. My machine is made by somebody else, and if I when I use this, if you looked at my blocks, they do the same thing. Uh, now the only thing is, these blocks have been exposed to the weather, so they dry out. I guarantee you, these blocks, if you put them on pallets and let them season for a couple months. They'll dry out real slow, and you'll have hardly any cracks. These are what's called surface cracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now, if you had them covered up so they could dry out slowly over a per per period of a couple months, you won't get any cracks because the whole block releases the moisture from the inside and it shrinks uniformly. What uh -huh. you have here, the outside of the block shrink real rapidly because the moisture and the wind and the sun sucked it all out, and it shrinks so rapidly in the, in the subsurface underneath there wasn't quite as wet, uh, dry, so it, it started shrinking back and it, it forms cracks. Excellent. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, so with respect to this whole project here and this wall, 
Well, let's say the first, the wall here, what, what are our next steps to backfill this, protect if, it from water? If, if uh, this was my project, I would address both ends. I'd tear the blocks back a couple foot, use a little bit of waterproofing from the ends because you will all constantly get moisture from the Actually. ends. And then waterproof and then bring blocks of concrete in a little ways. And then, and, then, and then waterproof the concrete separate, keep the concrete separate from the earth with a vapor barrier. Whether it's mastic, whether it's probably a mastic. And then, uh, and then go ahead and build your wall back up against the concrete blocks. The part that's on both ends is going to be exposed to the elements. And then uh, this here, I would take and clean it off. Fix your, your water damage here from the storms. Uh, press a new box, put it in there, and I would just uh, put on a thin slurry of earthen plaster. A little bit of lime and, and clay and sand. And slurry this in back level. And then when you're laying the blocks next time, I would be real careful and make sure that you're using the two sides that the dimensions are always the same. That way you'll have a good flat surface. What's happened here, you can see it right there. Somebody wasn't watching what they was doing and they laid these blocks right here. These weren't on the, these were on the side that came out. They should have been turned over. See how they came up? Uh -huh. should, they should have been turned over. This, is, this block should have been turned over, they would have been the same height. Mm -hmm, Just mm -hmm. like, like my block machine builds four inches thick 12 inches long and the width will vary. You can set it at 6 inches or 8 inches but it will always be a quarter inch or half inch different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's the side you put side by side. So that's why it doesn't, you know. <clears throat> but the height will always say, be perfectly the same. So this is because somebody got confused and maybe your block machine, if those dimensions were spread out a little bit farther, then it wouldn't be, it w then it wouldn't be, you couldn't get them confused. They'd have to lay down. Uh-huh. Okay. And as far as the completing the, the moisture protection of this wall, what are the specific steps? So we put a vapor barrier on this wall here. What, what are the steps? After you get the, after you get the columns up and the structure in, it's dry, then I'd come back, I would clean this back, clean the, clean everything back. I would, I would waterproof this down here. And then I, I just use six mil on this part. The part that's going to be exposed to the dirt. Six mil plastic. Yeah, and you, you, we're talking about we're only talking about about 16 inches. <laughs> we're uh -huh. really only talking about about 16 inches. That's going to be, you know, man, yeah, maybe let's see. Yeah, about 16 inches of, of backfill against this wall. But the backfill will never touch the wall. You're going to use six mil plastic. Okay. And then you're going to come back with a, a thin layer of foam. And the foam is, all it's for is to protect the plastic so these rocks won't push up against the plastic and put holes in it. And that's only for the interim. Uh, once it's, it's completely dried in, it doesn't matter. There's not going to be any moisture here anyway. We're just doing this as a protective item. Uh, actually, I'd recommend wrapping this whole wall from bottom to top. Uh huh. Now, <clears throat> this side over here, this is a problem. If it was an outside wall, this would be a problem. This lip, uh -huh. it would be a problem because the water would come down here and it would try to soak in. Uh -huh. But this is an interior wall. It's just, right now it's on the exterior. It's just built because the, the structure hasn't been built over it yet. So yep. this won't be a problem because it's an interior wall. But if this was an exterior wall, you would have to tear this off. And mm -hmm. I would never, I'd build another curve up higher if this was an exterior wall. But it's not. It's okay. an interior wall and it's in progress. Uh, is there, is it? wrong that this this wall here is not centered on the footer there? Is that going to cause a problem? Well, you're supposed to have a little stuff on both sides, but this isn't going to be a very tall wall. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand it's only going to be six foot. Six foot from, from this point right here. Yeah. Yep. But see, how much gravel you have underneath this footer? Uh, four to six inches. Okay, remember I said all load goes out at a 45 degree angle? Uh, the gravel, a gravel footer, a gravel underneath a concrete thing here, that's called a spread footer. A spread footer. That's because it spreads the load out at 45 degree angles before it compresses onto the soil that's underneath it. It's called a spread footer. So in reality, even though this wall over here, if you want to come over, is lined up, by the time it puts pressure onto the soil four to six inches down, it comes out at 45. So if you've got a four inches of gravel here, this weight right here is going to transfer its load to the soil four inches out. So that gives you your 30%. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't have problems. 30% is larger than the thickness yeah. of the wall. So as far as, as far as the earth sees, it's holding all this up. Uh, the earth thinks that it's already four or, four or five inches wider out here anyway. Because mm -hmm. it's a spread footer. Yep. And that's what you get. It's not, this, this wasn't poured on, on dirt. This was poured on so many inches of gravel. And it looks, it's clean gravel, but it's multiple 
granular so it can water can go through it. Mm -hmm. And that absor that absorbs some movement too, which is good. This is how I build. Even when I build wooden foundations, this is the same way. I build. I've built foam block uh, houses. I've built concrete block houses with the sheer wall on both sides. I've built stick. I've built two by six. I've tried all the methods, and uh, we just can't keep doing what we're doing. And uh, this is by far the biggest enemy with this in this area of the country is water. So like they do in straw belt construction, what do they do? They build the structure. If it's this time of year, they build the structure, put the roof on it, then they infill the bales. That mm -hmm. is, that's the same way you're going to be doing here. But, but it, eventually, these, these walls will be part of the structural process too. But yeah. at first, they're going to, well, kind of like a structural process. And well, your, your, your columns are going to be supporting most of your weight. Mm -hmm. So, so mid-course correction, we're going to, because of the late, late in the season, rain is a big issue, we're going to put the roof on first. And how are we going to put on the roof? I would do any of your structures. I would do that first, unless it's in the middle of the summer and it's super dry. Well, what I would do is I'd use uh, just like the pole barn builders do, and just like I've done in the past. Uh, when I build my houses, all this stuff, I do it uh, because I, I have a small crew, and I yeah, in this part of the country, even in the summertime, you don't know you could come up a rainstorm. It could be raining for a week and a half. Depends if there's a hurricane in the south and you pumps up all this moisture for, and you get really wet for two weeks. I like doing the structure and have a roof over it, then it's easier for me to bring the blocks in and just leave them in there. And then you can build it as you go. So now, we can do po just basic posts? Yeah, I would use a pressure treated post, laminated, laminated pressure, pressure, pressure treated post up for right now, and brace them, get your roof panels on, get it all dried in, then you could come back and start building your columns around them and then stiffen everything up and build the rest of your walls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's about all. Uh, that's what I would do. Okay. Uh, so to summarize, uh, we're not going to kill anybody here. <laughs> no. Now, if this wall was left exposed to the elements, you got it's going to really turn to junk. But it's not. It's going to be really with these by doing that, and you've already got the roof panels made. You should be able to. You should be able to get this all dried in in two or three days. Yeah. It's not going to rain for the next seven. They said so. Yeah. You should no, be able to get the. You should be able to get this thing dried in. Uh -huh. And then uh, there will never be any more moisture on this wall. And in the same time you get that dried in, somebody will have a bobcat and make this swale all the way around it and put your plastic on the outside. And that any water that gets there will drain away from the footer. It do doesn't matter, it would drain it away. And, and this will start a drying process. So, uh huh. Yeah. But if this was an exterior wall, you'd have to redo it. But it's not an exterior wall. You knew it wasn't an exterior wall. It's going to be an interior wall. It just happens to be on the outside because the rest of the structure hasn't been put up yet. Mm hmm. So yep. there's no issue to me. The only thing, I, the only thing that there isn't any issue. Just where you got to fix those blocks where the where the storms came in and it gathered all these water on these pieces of tin and run down those walls. Yeah, we had seams basically between the tin sections and in yep. between the seams, water got in. They're they're easy like to right fix. There. Just, it's easy to fix. Just go through, take those blocks out, down two or three layers, you stair step them out, and put your new blocks in. You're done. You're ready to go. Mm -hmm. Put a new slurry mix on the whole top of this wall. And make sure your workers understand that your fixed dimensions on your blocks, make sure the fixed dimensions down so that wall will be perfectly flat. Mm -hmm. And it's real obvious that they didn't, they goofed up. That's why it's wavy because whoever, whoever was in charge wasn't watching when they was doing this and, and uh, they, didn't, they didn't make sure they put them all flat. Mm -hmm. uh, they put it on the side that the dimension varies, but it's kind of easy to do because they're so close. It seems like this. the issue for those blocks being uneven was that there was too much, I mean, just a lot of slurry being used and it wasn't put unevenly. I don't know. It could be. It looks to me like you got a couple that's turned on its side, which mm -hmm. would be easy to fix. All you do is take them out, turn them on back on its side again. Yeah. You know, yep. it's not like this stuff is so, uh, it's so forgiving. You just take it out, clean it up, bring in some new blocks, or if you want to use the same one, clean it up and put it back on its side. Mm -hmm. but then uh, you, if you want to take some of these blocks out, you probably wouldn't have to do anything. So it would be, like for example, in the workshop right now, we've got a person dismantling the columns and salvaging the bricks, so that's, that's acceptable. If they haven't deteriorated much. If, if, they're, can, if, if they're, they're sound, you can clean them off. Look, we'll see. I, don't care if we, I don't care where, I, I, myself and everybody else, go look at all the hundreds of homes that's been built out there. Mm -hmm. When you're putting the ball together, a lot of times the ends are messing and everything. It doesn't matter because you're going to use a plaster or something, you know, you're going to smooth it up. Mm -hmm. So you're going to divot in the cracks and stuff, but this wall will shrink back as, as the blocks dry, but it doesn't matter. They shrink from the edge. The load bearing is in the middle. It's still, there's still so much 
uh, vertical uh, load in this thing that you could put on it. It's ridiculous compared mm -hmm. to a stick bill. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. The key is the moisture. Mm -hmm. So this will be on the inside here real quick. So that problem is that that problem is done. You're going to tear these out, put in new blocks. That problem's fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, but from now on, you're going to have to have waterproofing, and you're going to have to have a curb so the water can drain away on the rest of these walls once you put them in. Mm -hmm. and yeah. That that's addressed. That's not a, that's not a function of whether it's a bad block or good block. It's a function of how you're doing it. It's a technique on doing it, the proper way to do it. Mm -hmm. Just remember y your limitations on whatever building material you got. Mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. So you just know what your limitations. Your limitations is just water, pretty much. Mm -hmm. High compressive strength, no tensile strength, just like a concrete block. High tensile, high tensile strength, uh, compressive strength, no tensile strength. Mm -hmm. Except the concrete block won't deteriorate when it gets wet, but it will just soak it right through. So. Yep. All right. Well, excellent. Thanks, Floyd, for your comments, and we're going to press some bricks today. Excellent. Thanks again. Anyway, I wouldn't do anything with this. I would fix both ends and fix the level and get it get it closed in as soon as I could. I'm okay. I think you're fine. Okay.